Voting in the GHC greatest records bracket has reached the final stage. Uh, voting in that round ends tonight at midnight. We always bring on the four uh, representatives of the four uh, records still standing here uh, to discuss uh, their times back um, back in school and how those records, what they mean to them. Uh, looking at, at the camera here, we have Stormy Leonard from Wachita, who owns the league's career assists record in volleyball. Drew Harris, also from Wachita, the league's single game touchdown record with seven against Henderson State. Adam Dworsky, uh, Southeast Oklahoma State, owns our single season assists record in men's basketball. And Ethan Crocker, a relief pitcher on the Arkansas Tech base team from 2014, that set our single season wins record at 22. Uh, first off, congratulations to all of you on, on your records uh, and making it this far. Uh, we'll search how I see the camera here. Stormy, uh, when we announced the bracket, uh, just what were your thoughts on, on being part of it and uh, how uh, intense were you on trying to, to uh, push yourself to a win here? Um, when I saw the bracket, I was pretty surprised at just like how many records we have. And there are even more, obviously, but just going through it and looking and seeing what everyone's accomplished in their times, uh, whether it's like the team or individual was really cool. And to be included in that was awesome. Um, going through the bracket and seeing that I was going up with, against like arguably the most popular person in the GAC with Haley Tucker made me kind of nervous that I wasn't going to win. But um, Washtaw has a really good fan base. And so they've really helped. Drew and I out with pushing us through and getting people from Washta and that follow their media to vote. And I've got a really good support system back at home that I know that votes a lot. So I do reach out to them when the new like voting cycle's done just so that I can win because that would be fun. And I'm the only girl now, so that would be even better. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, same question to you when we put the bracket out here. Uh, you know, Wachita football was well represented, I think, with three or four records on there. Um, just where you saw when you were placed and, and you kind of see how the bracket was going to lay out and uh, how have you uh, been tracking everything's gone so far? Yeah, just to kind of reiterate what Stormy was saying, just 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 to be a part of something like this is really cool and special. Um, and, and just to be able to be recognized in the final four and be with these other three people. I mean, it's just really special. And, you know, to see all the different records that we had. Um, not only at Washtenaw, but then others around the GAC it was really cool. Um, you know, obviously I went up against the same person and the pitcher from Arkansas Tech twice. And I'm not going to lie, the second time I was pretty pretty nervous about that. The outcome of that one, obviously, if you got two records on on one of these playoff boards and you're doing something right. So, um, but no, it's been really cool. Again, just a um, Washtenaw fan base has been just awesome throughout this whole process. And they've done a really good job of getting our name out there and uh, helping us secure those votes and wins and stuff. So I appreciate them. And then um, it's just been a really cool, fun experience, especially now that we're all washed up has bins and not get to do a whole lot of comp competing, something that we get to compete on one, one last time. So it's been fun. Well, three of you are, as we bring on uh, Adam Dorsey from Southeastern, again, still currently a, uh, a basketball player there at Southeast, hopefully going to start our seasons here. Uh, Alex, when the bracket opened up, or we opened up the bracket, and you saw you were part of it, uh, just what was your uh, your thoughts of being part of it? I know that you know Katie on the women's side had won our uh, our women's ba our basketball uh, online bracket, so southeastern basketball again doing well presented here on uh, on this uh, online format. Matt, I think you're. I don't, I'm sorry, I think you're muted, buddy. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, I think the GAC's done a really good job, uh, especially during quarantine, just as far as getting, you know, getting the athletes' names out there and giving us a chance to compete, um, you know, during times when we're not able to do so on the field or court. And, you know, like the other two said, it's just a really humbling experience being a, being a part of um, this bracket, knowing how many uh, great records and great athletes have come through the GAC. And, uh couple of rounds in I got to go up against Jonathan Dunn um you know who I've played against seven or eight times since I've been at Southeastern so it's just really cool seeing um you know all the athletes and all their records that um you know they've been able to achieve while they're in the GAC and uh, again just a really cool experience to be a part of it and then lastly uh Ethan Crocker there from Arkansas Tech you have you're part of the longest standing record here with your best team back in 2014 so you guys are a little older how was your uh, your group text thread when you saw your uh your team's achievements recognized in this uh, in this bracket. Oh, it was really awesome. Uh, I'm glad we made it this far. Uh, like the other guy said, I'm just lucky to be here. I I'm glad that we have made it this far, and I'm, I'm really pushing for a win here. Um, 
but yeah, just just being the old guy here, uh, senior year was in 2014. It just, I mean, it's it's just a lot of memories. Uh, six years ago, it was just a, it's been awesome, and uh, yeah, a bunch of us have kept in touch and all that, and uh, yeah, they got my back through this, and I'm just really happy I'm able to support the whole team. And Ethan, we'll stay with you since you guys do have the one team record. So you are representing the whole bunch of guys uh, with this with this record. Just takes back to that start of that season. Um, and when things started to click and when it started getting special, uh, as you guys started to rattle off wins there, starting, I guess, in late March and going through the end of the regular season. Well, we knew we were going to be good. We knew what we had coming back from the previous year, and uh, it was something special. And it was a it was a great, great group of guys that came in to start that season. And, uh, yeah, about about the end of March, we started rolling, and, uh, and you could just feel a change. It, it clicked. We knew we were going to be good in the fall. Uh, we had a good start to the season. Uh not winning every single game, but uh, it was a good start, and uh, yeah, something happened. I can't pinpoint a game or anything, but uh, we just all clicked, and uh, you know everything went together. The hitters, the pitcher, starting the bullpen, um, it it just clicked, and we went on a roll. It's it it awesome to be a part of. And since baseball is is one of the sports most known for its uh, super streak, how many were uh, how many were uh, active during that streak? About. Uh, you know, same pregame routine, same meals, same, you know, uh, you know, clothing you were wearing, socks and jock straps and whatnot. How many of those things do you think were concurrent during that streak? Uh, it was a whole lot. Uh, I would say the whole pitching staff had something. Um, but I, I'll say that I was probably the worst one about it. Um, I, was, I was a reliever. So starting the game, I had something just about every few innings that I was doing. Um, I always had a Powerade Snickers. Uh, I knew when to take an energy drink. Uh, yeah, it was we all had something. Randy Vallejo had something. Jake Bell had something. It was, uh, you know, a lot of socks, a lot of jock straps, all that stuff. Uh, we had to make sure we had the same stuff on going to the park, make sure our cleats were clean. We had to clean cleats before every game. Uh, couldn't do that. Couldn't leave the dirt on them from the game before. That was a big deal. Uh, just a little thing. Adam, we move to you, back to you. Um, both you and Stormy, your records are for assists, so you are reliant on, on teammates to, to come through. Uh, to, to boost your totals, and you've certainly had uh, some great uh, teammates there at Southeast in these first three years you've been there. Um, just uh, how, uh, I guess we say, how easy was it to, to find those guys open to convert, uh, you know, the passes that you made to them? Mute. Uh. Yeah, just having guys that can put the ball in the goal make make you know getting assists a lot easier. Just guys like Kevin Buckingham, Jet Joe, Kellen Manick, and uh, I think a lot of it too is just the coaches trusting me with the ball and putting me in a position to where I can you know just be free, be loose with the ball, play aggressive, and try to get to the paint and draw help and kick it out. And like I said, when you got guys that can make shots, um, getting assists really isn't all that difficult. And is there one that stands out, maybe not just say from this past year when you set the record, but the one that you've had that you uh, look back fondly on from your, your first three years there in, uh, in Durant? Yeah, there's a, there's really two that come to mind. The first one was my freshman year. I, uh, I passed out to Jed Job um, to tie Southern Nazarene in the, in the conference tournament. That was a pretty cool one. And then the other one that I think of is um, when we were playing in the national tournament in the first round against Northern State my sophomore year. Uh, down by three late in the game after we made a, a crazy comeback and kind of dribbled down the floor and made a move and turned around and kind of pitched it back to Kevin Buckingham and he made a circus shot at the buzzer to send it in overtime, which, you know, my job of that play wasn't really all that hard, but it's just kind of cool that I got the assist on that play. So those those two kind of come to mind when I think of my, my favorite assists. Yeah, the second one you mentioned there with Kevin was one of the – one of the great all-time GAC postseason. I think that was the same day that Southwestern uh, won a buzzer beater on the women's side in their bracket, and both of you uh, coming down to the final seconds uh, with clutch plays. Uh, Stormy, with the over 4,700 assists that you put up in your career, is it easy to come up with one that that you stand out that stands out to you? Um, I was just like sitting here trying to think of one. I can't think of any specific. I do know. My freshman year, I dished it back to Abby Pickett, and I'm pretty sure, like, pretty sure she like knocked her girl out. Like, she was on the floor for a while, and that was our very first tournament of my freshman year. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this girl's crazy good. Like, she really just took this girl out. Um, other than that, like, I have a lot of obviously like fond memories of 
like getting assists. I had great players surrounding me. Um, but with volleyball, you've got to win by two. So my assist can win the game, but then like I had to win the point before that too. So it's a little bit different, but um, I have a lot of assists. That I'd be like, okay, that was awesome. Like the way I had great middle blockers, they'd put the ball down. I would not want to be behind it. Like I had that, I had some good outsides and uh, right side hitters. So, I mean, a lot of them come to mind, but I don't know if I have a favorite. And with you being the only one here uh, with a record for a career, it obviously uh, involves getting playing time earlier. Just take us back to when you first uh, were put into the lineup and then uh, how much you were unwilling to give up that position during your four years at, uh, at Washita. Coming in um, as a freshman, we had two other setters on the roster and I met both of them and I'd practiced around them before during my tryout and stuff. And I just came in with the mindset that I'm going to contribute like however I can. I didn't think I would start. I didn't think I'd play a lot. Um, being a freshman, I was like, you know, I'll have to wait my turn um, or my spot. But the first tournament rolls around. I'd kind of been a little sick that week, so I really didn't think Coach Prescott was going to let me play. And then we get there on Friday. I remember it's Alabama Huntsville. We walk into the gym. I'd been sick the day before. And then we're getting ready for the game. And they're like, okay, we're like, when we break out? And Coach is like, yeah, Stormy, you're up. And I was like, Coach, like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to play. He's like, no, like, you're in. I was like, oh, okay. And then after that, like, I just tried to establish myself as a leader on the court in the way I played and um, and by vocal leading and stuff. So I was not willing to give up my spot. I was challenged a few times with um, throughout my career at Washaw with girls coming in um, that were really talented, but I am also, like, hyper competitive. So I was not going to let them uh, get one over me. Um, there were times that it was really close and that, you know, you could have put anyone else in but me, but I was not going to give my coaches the opportunity. I had to establish myself as a good setter, but also a good teammate and a good leader. So that was my goal. And I never gave it up and I would do all four years over and over again. <laughs> and lastly, you bring on Drew here. You're the record is the only one here that's a single game record. And uh, you're adding to the significance of, of the set touch as that comes in a, uh, one of the, you know, the, the top rivalries in, in Division Two with you and Henderson State in the Battle of the Ravine. Just take us back to how that day went. Uh, anything pregame or in the game plan of that week that gave you the uh, thought that even seven was a possibility? I don't know, man. We, you know, we go into that game every year trying to score as many points as we can. But, um, you know, obviously a big game. Um, definitely one that I'll never forget. Big, really a big team effort, though. You know, we talk about. I was a big individual performance, but I mean, I definitely couldn't have done anything without the other ten guys on the field with me. And that's what, that's the that's the beauty of football is it takes all eleven guys working together. And you know, my teammates really performed that day and had really solid performances from other guys around the team. And you know, I just was fortunate enough to be the guy that gets it in the box seven times. So um, definitely a big day for me and my family, uh, but also for the team. Big conference championship win, first one since fourteen, um, and so that was a big day for not only me but. Uh, Watch stuff football in general. And just as that day unfolds with it being just a, a gaudy number and the game being 49 42, it wasn't like you were picking up some garbage touchdowns at the or garbage time touchdowns, excuse me. Um, just in the flow of that day, did it when, did, when it was over, did you realize you had all seven or uh, did someone to come up and tell you afterwards? Or how did you, when did you first know that you had uh, accounted for all of the, all the touchdowns that day? Yeah, I mean, I think that it was 28 to 14 at halftime and like, I think I knew that I had all four, but I mean, I, at that point I was like, okay, we're going to have to score a couple more. Hopefully some other guys will get in the box, you know, and, uh, but it, heck in the second half, it just so happened I scored the, the, the rest of the three. And I didn't really realize until one of my teammates came up to me on the side. I was like, Hey man, you got all seven. And I was like, wow, man, it's just <laughs> something that you, you dream about. Um, and so it was just really cool experience. And I, I'm just really fortunate to have been a part of it. And uh, story with you and, and your career at watch the overlap with Drew's, um, were you able to follow that game along or were you guys on the road or when did you learn of, of uh, the exploits of that game? And, and, and at first off that the Tigers had won to win the title that, and then that it was all on a, uh, not all, but all of the touchdowns came courtesy of Drew. I honestly think, so this would have been our junior year that this happened. And I want to say that I didn't make it to the game and it was also, I'm pretty sure it's like freezing cold. Um, but I followed – whenever we were traveling, I always followed the football team. Um, and so I had all the live stats and everything pulled up, and it's like Drew Harris scored, Drew Harris scored, Drew Harris scored, on and on. I was like, did Drew, did Drew really just, like, score all of that for us? Like, And then we win, and obviously, like you said, it was a big game because 
had they not won, we wouldn't have secured the championship. And so, like, just watching that unfold and just seeing Drew's name all over the stats, I was like, dang, Drew, have yourself a day. Like, <laughs> It was, I think we were all in the same the same boat because we have all the six rivalry games going on kind of concurrently that last day, and just seeing how that was playing out, it was a it, was, it made Player of the Week a very easy choice <laughs> that week. Um, as we begin to wrap up here with our episode of the four finalists here, um, we'll just start first with Ethan. Just just take us again through when we had the bracket uh, released. Um, you know, with you guys with with where you were positioned, you you, you twice had to face or sorry, you had to face different Arkansas Tech teams uh, in the bracket. And then your your final, uh, your most recent win, it was a, 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 an all-baseball affair with you and, and SAU. Um, just, just just tell us how it's been watching this bracket unfold and and where you thought maybe that uh, this is a real tough matchup, but the fact that your team pushed through was uh, was extra special. We followed, we kept up with the Arkansas Tech volleyball team a lot. Uh, that we knew they were really good. Uh, all respect to that team, that program. Uh, they're top notch. They're really good. But uh, going on to SAU baseball, it's always nice. Um, we created a pretty good rival those few years that I was there. And uh, especially that 2014 season, we got to host a regional. And uh, we sent them home. I forgot what round. We sent them home in the regional at Arkansas Tech that year. That was That's pretty special. That's a big win. I, I really enjoyed that. So it's, it's nice to get back here and uh, – and uh, Ethan, your matchup up there with Drew in this semifinal matchup. Uh, you mentioned already facing uh, Jalissa Gum from Arkansas Tech a couple times uh, in the bracket. Uh, you also had to had, you took out one of our number one seed. Uh, just just go through this last month here and, and how it's been just watching you know watching your your success move on. You can only control so much with with it being a Twitter based uh, poll, but. Uh, just what's it been like to kind of be back in a in a, in a competitive field related to uh to GAC event? Oh yeah, it's been a lot of fun, you know. And I think I said it earlier, you know, going up against I think it was Jalissa the right. She, I mean, she was. I remember watching her play a couple times against OBU, I and mean, she was really impressive to watch. You know, getting close against her twice uh, was definitely um, was, it was a lot of fun. I really thought she was going to put me the second time, but um, you know, watched all six of her and came through for a minute. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to be able to compete at the GAC level again, and um, you know, just to be able to be a part of something like this. Um, I'm just to see what the results are at the end of the day. You know, the, the tech's coming back, so uh, that tells me to push through one more one last time here. And uh, Adam, same uh, question you. You actually took out our, our top overall seed, uh, Scott Ferocious, the home distance thrower. Um, you've also you know, you mentioned Jason Jonathan earlier in the, uh, in the in the bracket, and there was a matchup with you and East Central uh, cross country earlier. So you've had some rivalries uh, all built in here. Um, just what's it been like watching this this bracket unfold as you guys get ready to start your your season again? Yeah, it's just it's been really cool following along and keeping up with it. Um, anytime I can beat East Central in anything, whether it be in a game or in a Twitter poll, you always got to take that where you can get it. Uh, same with Jonathan Dunn. Uh, he uh, had his fair share of success against me uh, when he was when he was playing, and so it was just it was cool going to up against him and beating him. But, yeah, like he said, it's just a cool thing to follow along. Uh, we're not able to play games right now. Usually we – now, I think a year ago today, uh, I saw in my memories we played uh, University of Oklahoma in our first exhibition. So usually around this time we're uh, – kind of getting rolling and getting the season going. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're having to postpone that a little bit. But, yeah, this this tour poll is just kind of giving us a little bit of a competition during this time, and I've enjoyed uh, following it along and, you know, keeping up with it. And we'll wrap up here with Stormy. Uh, just the competition here, and you said you were already ultra-competitive uh, on the court, and it certainly has shown with your uh, veracity for retweeting and, and posting uh, – to encourage the votes on your side, just, you know, just again, when the bracket was released and, and you see, you've already mentioned facing Haley, you, you faced, uh, you know, Brooke go from SAU uh, in a matchup against a top seed. And then you finished here. Your most recent win was against it's so hard in the all volleyball elite eight matchup. Just, uh, you know, as someone who's now uh, similarly sidelined here as the GA at tech um, waiting for sports to come back, just how excited or how much fun has it been to, to, to be competitive again in something, even if it is just online poll. 
Um, it's been a lot of fun and obviously getting to beat so she's even though we were rivals and I always wanted to beat her like we're still good friends and we keep up with each other but I really wanted even if it's a Twitter poll to take that win over her I'd lost her enough when I played her so um, it was good and I've been able to I like even watch Brooke good when she was at SAU playing softball she was insanely talented so to go up against them and be able to win even like I said even if it's a Twitter poll and um, it's just based off like our Washtenaw fan base helping us out and people from where I grew up is fun. And I mean, I, I work in media now with at tech, so I'm pretty much always on my phone or the computer. So as soon as something pops up about the matchups, I'm like, okay, retweet, retweet. Um, and I've got a, like a really good support system at home that does the same thing. So it's been fun. And I, like I said, I like being competitive. So this gave me a little outlet. And if I can take all the guys down, that'd be fun too. <laughs> well, uh, Stormy, Drew, Adam, and Ethan, uh, we thank you all for taking the time to join us here. Voting again wraps up here at midnight uh, with the finals beginning tomorrow and conveniently uh, wrapping up on midnight next Tuesday, November 3rd. So uh, all those watching, vote in our fun poll and then also vote uh, in the real stuff here next week. Thank you all for taking the time uh, to look back on your on your achievements and, uh, and talking with us. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.